Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Um, today, we're going to continue with part two of our distress mica stains. So playing around with distress mica stains. As you can see, I have already been playing. Um, yeah. So if you're concerned about this, this will be gone by tomorrow. It won't be a problem. But if this bothers you, make sure that you're wearing gloves. OK, because uh, these are stains. So, yeah, you will definitely uh, definitely get some color on yourself and perhaps your surrounding area. So make sure that you're taking precautions for that. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating backgrounds that look like the northern lights. Um, so here in Canada, we get the Northern Lights. We can see them all the time. They're beautiful in the sky, dancing. Um, you might also know them as the Aurora Borealis. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to create some beautiful backgrounds that look like they have the uh, Northern Lights in the, in the background. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to be playing with uh, Distress Mica Stains. The, per the ones that I have that I'll be playing with are uh, the Tim Holtz or Ranger. Uh, distress mica stains. He, um, Tim Holtz introduced these in sets of three. Uh, you get, there's two sets at Halloween and then two sets at Christmas. Um, and they have really cute colors on them, like, or names. So like, for example, this one's Shiny Bauble, this one's Merry Mint. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this one, yeah, this one's Cocktail Party. And then for the Halloween ones, you get, this is like Wicked Elixir. And this one is like, uh, ominous twilight so you know you get these really fun names these are not the same names as the regular distress line so like the twisted citron um uh what's another one um oh uh, speckled egg things like that so they're they're not the same um as the distress regular line however they are a distress product so they are meant to mix match go together all of those kind of things. So uh, you can certainly use these with any distress products that you already have. Um, however, there are other brands that are out there that uh, carry something similar to the mica stains. Um, so there are distress stains out there. So what that is, is that is water with pigment in it. Um, so basically the water is tinted uh, with the color and that is part of the distress line. So, for example, whether you have Villainous Potion, which is that deep, deep purple, um, the, what did I say, Speckled Egg or uh, Twisted Citron. So it is the water that is mixed with the pigment in a spray uh, form. So you can use it for any kind of water, um, water-based media things that you're doing. Okay. This, uh, as I said in the previous video, this is uh, water that is mixed with pigment, but also has mica so you get the she the sheen to it so with this one um and anything that has mica in it you need to shake it uh until you hear pretty sure you guys can hear that until you can hear the, the uh, ball bearing that's in the bottom moving when you are also shaking any item that has water with mica in it you want to shake it side to side not up and down because when you go up and down you put the uh, larger chunks of the mica up the spray nozzle and then you block your tube here and trust me, you want to make sure that you're shaking these really well. We were um, playing with these a couple weekends ago at a crop and uh, at a class I was teaching. And uh, many people, if you don't shake it enough, that mica doesn't break down. And we had many a plugged bottle. So you want to make sure um, before you start, like you need to, any of the colors that you're choosing to use, you want to start and give them all a good shake. But even before you go to spray them, you need to give it a shake to make sure that uh, things are still mixed around there. Okay. But as I was saying, so this these are the ones that I'll be using are from Ranger. Um, I have a few of them. I'm, I have six colors out today that I'll be using. Um, but I have a few more down to the side that I use for different kinds of seasons and whatever. But these are the ones that I've chosen to use for this particular technique. Um, Lavinia has ones that I think they call their mystical sprays. Uh, I believe Nouveau Tonic Studios has one out as well. There's a couple of different ones. We also had... Um, you may have seen or you may not have, but I have videos where I've done pigment powders, which are the powder form. You put them, tap them onto your paper, spray them, and then they explode and the pigment kind of um, like goes where it will and you can mix and match. Um, and some of those have mica in them as well. Those are the same kind of product. These are just already in a spray bottle mixed with water. So um, 
yeah, you get that, that diffusion to start with, and then you can mix more water, more or less water, however you want to do it, versus the powders. Those are just pure pigment. They haven't been mixed with water. And in order to get the techniques done, you have to add water to them. So I hope that's making sense. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to create, so I, I, I highly recommend that you practice with this first, because essentially what we're trying to do is create streaks going down our paper. Okay. So we want to create, because that's what the Northern Lights look like. They dance in the sky and they, you know, it's, it's kind of an up and down motion. Sometimes they'll form, I've, I've seen many different pictures. One had an angel in it. They're just beautiful, but that's, that's essentially the, the technique of what we're going to be working with today. Okay. And I am using uh, watercolor cardstock. You definitely will need watercolored cardstock because we're using um, a lot of water for our technique today. So you definitely want to make sure you're doing that. Now I'm just using uh, cheapo watercolor cardstock. I actually got from Dollarama here in Canada. That's our dollar store. Um, yeah, so I got this whole pad. There's 20 sheets in here and I just cut it into four uh, for what I'm doing and uh, for $3. So you can't go wrong with that. So it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to invest in artist quality in order to do this. Um, but yeah, if you have that, then by all means, please use it, you know, use what you've got. If you've got the pigment powders already, try putting them in some little spray bottles, mixing them up and, and then you've got the spray already. You have a little bit more control over what that looks like. Play around with it. Okay. So the two colors, when I'm doing this particular technique, I like to start with my lighter colors first in the background, and then I build the darker colors on top of that. Okay. So I'm giving my, uh, this is the Wicked Elixir, which is kind of a limey green color. So and I'm going to put it onto my cardstock here pretty heavily, and I'm going to give it a spray and help it move down, down the cardstock. Okay. A tap. I'm happy with that. Now, if you are, I have a dear friend, she passed away not too long ago, who um, would definitely be using all of the material that's down here because that's quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want, you could have another piece of card on the side here where you could be dipping and dabbing and, and uh, creating another background. I'll show you what I did um, with the practice ones. But in between here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this. Okay, so I've got my heat tool on the side here. This piece of paper is going to get pretty warm as we start to dry it. So the um, the tool, the heating tool here that I'm using is the Ranger Heat It tool, craft tool. It's made specifically for um, uh, like mixed media type things because it doesn't blow like a lot of air, but it gets very hot. Looks like a hair dryer, as you can see. It looks like a hair dryer, but it isn't a hair dryer. If you had used this on here, you'd fry. <laughs> you fry your hair. You'd have nothing left. You'd be not happy about it. Um, but uh, it's great for using these kind of things. So if you are using one of the barrel type heat tools, please make sure that you're keeping an eye on your paper. We had several people when we were doing this at the prop that were um, using their barrel and, and not noticing that their paper was starting to smoke. It's getting a little warm. So I've got my base color here. I'm going to add just a little bit deeper in a few areas here. I'm going to let that go down. The only thing that I'm trying to, I don't mind having the streak. What I don't want is where it kind of um, piles up, uh, you know, where you get that um, looks like a drip mark. I don't mind having multiple layers of the color, but I don't want it to look like a drip mark per se. And between each one that you spray, you need to, we're going to heat it up. We're going to dry that particular um, layer of color so that we can continue to layer on top. If it's wet, so once, ow, I get my tweezers out here pretty quick here. Um, the, the cool thing about distressed products and this type of technique is that as long as you have dried it, that color tends to be set. If you want to continue to move your color around, then you need to, um, you want to do a wet on wet technique. That's what will help move your color around. But if you want like the green to stay and then you want to add another color on top, you need to dry it in between. Okay. So in order to pick this up, what I'm going to do now is just kind of do this, give it a swipe with some paper towel. Um, another good way to really clean these things is to reactivate them with some water that helps you pick them up much easier. Okay. So I've got my first layer in the green. Okay. Now, I am going to want to add in, oopsie, 
a little bit of this cocktail pink. One. Okay, so I've added in the cocktail pink, which is kind of a bright, ready pink color. Neat. <clears throat> and now I'm going to dry that. Same steps, same steps. The nice thing about this particular heat tool versus the... Um, the barrel ones is that because it doesn't blow like so much air, um, I can still talk over it. Um, sometimes you guys won't even hear it in the background, but yeah, it's really, really nice to uh, be able to still convert. Oh, sorry, just uh, continue on with the uh, video while I'm drying. Okay, try and been making an effort to keep my tweezers or not my tweezers my heat tool out of my the uh the cord out of the mess that i've got going here on my tonic studios at the last night tonic studios tim holtz so you can see here i'm wiping up this area because uh again i'm getting over spray so you want to make sure that you're wearing clothes or an apron that you know you don't mind getting because you might get some dye on it and it may not come out it is dye it is pure pigment your pigment and color. Okay, so here we are so far. Yep, hot mess. That's okay, not to worry about it. We are kind of looking for it to be a bit of a hot mess. And I do want uh, more saturated colors higher because this is going to be kind of the sky. This is going to be coming towards the ground kind of area, right? So I do want the more saturated colors up at the top. So now I'm going to take my, this is the shiny bauble color. And I'm just going to go in and I'm adding, I'm catching kind of the area. So this is kind of a turquoise blue color. And that center, I'm just going to add some water to the center. I don't want to add too much water onto the sides because I'm, I'm liking how saturated that is on the sides there. So I'm actually going to do this. And, and you can see just even when I'm picking it up, look at all that mica that's on there sheen and shine so let's try this okay. so versus um last time we just played with the micas with the mica spray stains um so we just kind of had a fun with them right we just and then did a bunch of different backgrounds and it's like how can we you know, how do I use this product? Let's get familiar with this product and um, just have a play with it. And then, and then, okay, now I've made one hellaciously hot mess. So what do I do? And what do I do with these things now? Right. So that, that was what we played with in the last video. So if you want to, you know, if you want to see what I did with some of the backgrounds and things like that, please go and check that video out. But um, for this one, this is a specific kind of thing, which takes a layering effect. It needs to have the layering in order to get the different colors because it needs to be in the background and some of these colors will show through once we get to our darker colors. <clears throat> so this technique or this particular um, <clears throat> way of doing this, sorry, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, this particular, uh, yeah, technique we'll go with, that's a good, good enough word for it, uh, does take time, it takes practice. Um, you know, if you're not liking it, add more water. Uh, you do want to keep in mind um, your coordinating colors, things like that, to make sure that you are still getting, um, you know, you're not you're not getting brown. Maybe brown is what you're looking for. That's not the worst thing in the world. Um, mm -hmm. But you do want to, you know, if you're adding like greens and and uh, purples together and they're still wet, you're going to have brown. So you want to watch that. Okay. So here's where I've got so far. I'm actually really quite happy with that. 
So if I wanted to, I could just leave it like this, put a happy birthday or put this behind a nice cover plate die, right? Like something like, so like, uh, really pretty. Looks like a smoke, like a sunset or something behind it. But I'm actually looking for something that is more nighttime. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my two darkest colors. And these ones I will use um, probably spraying at the same time. So my two darkest colors that I have are uh, Ominous Twilight, which is a deep, deep purple. And then this really pretty blue. This is actually my favorite out of all of them. And I'm, I'm going to, oops, shoot, probably have to buy this set again because I absolutely love this color. And it's called uh, Juniper Blue. Now, this is the only one out of those, all of the sets that I got. And I think I have six sets so far um, that doesn't, you can hear the ball bearing in this one. No ball bearing in this one. And there hasn't been since I started using this one. Okay. So, alrighty. So what I'm going to do now is starting again at the top, I'm going to take my darker colors. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the juniper. Okay. And kind of spray down like that. And then I'm also going to take the purple. And I'm going to give it a bit of a spray. I think I want to blue there. And now I'm going to come in with my water. And we're going to have this run down the card. Just go catch that edge there. Whoa, that's so pretty. Okay. I should really get my fingers out of there. Okay. Okay. Now, I made some beautiful backgrounds by swooping this stuff up. But because I want to dry this, I'm pretty happy with how it looks, but look at that, you guys. Look at the color in that. That is so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to dry that. That's pretty. I'm just talking to myself. When I first started practicing and playing with this, I was just tickled. I was at a crop and I was giggling to myself. Like, you know, when you're really happy with something that you've made and you can't believe, geez, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, that's, uh, that was me. I'd like to say I wasn't that tickled, but I was. Yeah. All righty. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so this is the way that I've been using it because you can see where my finger mark there was. But look at that. Now, if I were to turn this this way, now I've even got some of the lighter colors. So I've got the darker sky up here. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Oh, yay, me, me, me. Okay, so I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to clean up here. <clears throat> Take this. Oh. Okay. Now, the one that I showed you, I did use an embossing folder, and the embossing folder that I had previously used was, that Micah, get myself another stick towel, because I made one heck of a mess with that. Right. Here, paper towel, to the side. Okay, so the embossing folders that I had used... Um, the first one that I showed you, so that's this one here, this guy here. That was the Forest Border by Simon Says Stamp. It's a beautiful, 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 beautiful um, embossing folder. They make, Simon Says Stamp really does make my favorite embossing folders, and they're very affordable. Okay, And this one, the um, name of it has uh, <laughs> has come off, but it's also, so this is the next one that I'm going to do. So I'll show you what this one looks like using um, a background that you've already um, embossed. Okay, so you want to pre-emboss it. But this one is also from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm pretty sure it's still available, but it's very, very pretty. Okay, so I've got the trees here. So this is going to be my sky. So this is where I'm going to want most of my darker areas. So what I want to do first is lay down again. I want to lay down my lightest colors. So I'm going to start with my Wicked Elixir. Okay, and I'm going to come in here. And I actually, in this one, I can spread it out with the water just a bit, but I actually want to have 
that be quite saturated. I don't want to dilute that color because then by putting it in there, um, you can sort of see where where it's gathering, where I've uh, embossed. So you get those deeper tones. So you get a couple of different colors because the color is sitting on top of more color. So it makes it look like I've used two different colors when I only use the one spray, right? Okay. All right, let's, let's clean that up, give her a spritz. Activate the color and give it a wipe. Okay, there we go. So that's my base, that's my base layer. So especially because it's trees, I wanna keep a lot of that in there, but I am still gonna add in, uh, let's see here, do I wanna use the pink or just the blue? Well, why don't I use some Merry Mint? I don't think I used that one before. So Merry Mint is kind of like this turquoisey green color. But I'm going to put this on top of this limey green um, Wicked Elixir color. And so I'm going to come in here and spray in a few areas. Not all of it, but I do want to have a bit of like a layered color, right? And I like that, but I do want it to mix a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit of water. So this really reminds me, this particular technique, um, especially uh, reminds me of using alcohol inks, um, like playing and mushing and, and getting your uh, colors to kind of to mix together and how, um, how you can play with those colors. And, you know, if you want it to mix more, add more either alcohol or the blending solution. Um, you know, for me, this one, if I want it to blend more, I want it to be a little fainter, I add more water, um, you know, but still blending the colors and, and creating backgrounds based on those, like, um, yeah, playing with that. What's nice about these, though, is especially because, you know, with alcohol inks, you really want to make sure that you're using something in a well-ventilated area because you can get quite sick. Um, yeah, the alcohol smell can be quite strong, especially if you've been doing it for a while, using sprays really have to watch out for the resin that is in the, um, let's give that a white for, uh, you have to really watch for the resin that is in the uh, blending solution. Otherwise, uh, you know, you can inhale that, which is really not good. So, um, but, okay, so that's with the Merry Mint. Now look at how cool that is, just, just even with that. So I've still got some of my lime green. I've got some of this turquoise minty green now on top. Perfect. So now what I want to do is I want to start um, kind of tipping this because I want to keep some of these lighter colors. I don't want it to get too dark down there. And I'm only, I'm going to go right into, go right into, you know what? I'm not, I lied. Well, I am going to tip it from this side, but I want to start with the shiny bauble. Actually, I need to bring in this too because I want this colors to be in my sky. Okay, so I'm going to get these guys going together. You can see there where it's not quite meeting my paper. So I want to make sure that that's moving all the way down. Because otherwise, you can just see there, I'm going to get a buckle where there's no color there. Or not smooth color. And I'm looking for smooth penetration. I don't know why I'm saying smooth like that. Sorry, <laughs> um, but that's what I'm looking for. I want it to be a nice, even blend. Even would also be a good way of describing it. I want a nice, even blend um, where the colors are blending together. Um, it's, you know, when you're doing a background, it's nice to sometimes have where the uh, color kind of puddles and things like that, but I don't want it on um, with this particular technique. Yeah. So I'm not trying to look and have too much splotchiness. What I mean is here at the edge, you can even see, do you see that darker line? So this is where it was running off smoothly and this is where the line of water kind of caught the edge there. So that's not the end of the world on the edge because there is a finishing um, technique to what we will be doing here. But wouldn't even, like this would be absolutely gorgeous. Put your sentiment on it, call it good. But that's not what we're here for, right? That's the simple thing. 
And again, we're just playing. So there's no point in panicking because it's just paper, paper and water, you know, use your supplies. I don't know about you, but I tend to hoard too many things. So what is the point of even having them if I'm not going to start to use them? So let's start using some of these things, folks. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give it one shot of this pink from here. Mm -hmm. One kind of streak of pink, but I want to make sure I'm diluting that one pretty good. Of that. There you go. Water on this edge. If you need some water on this edge. You can see here where it's starting to bead up. I want to make sure that that moves off the edge of my paper. Nice, smooth, smooth transition. So now I've got all of this down here and I'm going to start playing with the darker purples and blues. So I don't want to have this interfering with the colors that are going to come onto my page. So I'm going to clean that up, give it a spritz. There you go. Alrighty. Now, I do still want my items to trickle down this way. Okay. So I like how my sky is coming out so far. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna spray, and we're gonna spray, and we're gonna spray. Watch some of those bottles, cause they do, they do spritz at you. And so now I'm gonna put my fingers up here and I'm gonna spray down. Don't forget, it's okay to admire your work. Slightly <laughs> area here where it's still a little too... Uh, um, Okay. As you play with these more and more, you start to get to know what the colors will do. You'll find colors that work really well for you, colors where it's like, oh, that one's difficult to work with. So, you know, play with those ones. I'm starting to knock some of my extra sentiments off here. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to call that good for now. And let's have a looky see. Look at that. And this one got this one that I did is a lot darker. I used a lot more purple and uh, not as much. I didn't have as much background in the green. I used yellow, uh, yellow green, and then uh, more pink. And I used a different purple on that one. So it went very dark. Still gorgeous though. But look at this one. That's going to be a gorgeous background. So let's clean up our workspace here. 
Um, so just as an FYI, I'll clean up my, my glass mat here, but then I'll also give you a heads up on how I like to clean and prepare my bottles to store them. Because again, you don't want them getting too um, mucked about, right? Okay, so let's do that then. Anyway, a little wipe of the hands. Let's see how much color I picked up. <laughs> oh, no, oh, yeah, I did get some blue. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a wipe like that. I'm going to put this down to the side for now while I give it everything a bit of a wipe here. <laughs> Back. Just remind me to stay in frame. Okay, so what I like to do, uh, because these do leak a little bit out the sides, I like to give them a bit of a wipe down like this. I also make sure to wipe down the nozzle. Like that. And then, um, sometimes, sometimes they're not too bad, but they'll have a bit of color in them. So I also like to give a little bit of a wipe on uh, just inside the lid. Okay. So now we're not quite finished with our backgrounds yet. There is one final step that I like to do. And uh, there are two different ways of doing this. Okay, so I'm going to save that one on this one, because this one is so dark, what I want to do is I am going to create some, I want to make some stars, we need some stars, right? We need to have some stars. So I'm using a white acrylic paint on here. And I'm just going to get it flowing. And like this, and I need something to tap onto here. So let's find a. Yeah, these are heavy enough that I can work with these. Okay, so I've kind of just blocked off a little bit of the um, area in here where the trees are. So not totally. I'm going to go like this here, and I'm just going to. That's not working. I need a heavier thing to block with. There we go. That's better. Turn this like this as well here. And hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you have a splatter box, this is one of the things that you would like to be doing in there because you can't, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm getting it all over my glass mat, which is fine because that's what a glass mat is for, but it's also kind of getting a little bit over there. So I'm just going to cover this up or put the lid back on and I'm going to come in with my uh, baby wipe and kind of give this a wipe for this paint before it sets too badly. Because it is paint, so it's a permanent thing. I mean, it'll it'll scrape off just fine off of my uh, glass mat, which is fine. Um, but I do I'll have to come in with a scraper. See, because it's already dry on there, which is great because that allows us to do the next technique. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see here, so look at now I've got a few little stars in there. Everything kind of now it looks a bit more like a night sky, which is great. Okay. The other thing that you can do is take, so these are some perfect pearls. These are um, pick, um, micas, mica powders. Uh, and this one is by Ranger again. So this is the confetti white, but there is also a color called perfect pearl, which is also a white. Um, with this one, what I like to do is take out, uh, take out a little bit, not that much. I don't know what you can see there. I'm going to put it on my glass mat here. Move this back up. So when you're doing, um, when you're closing your perfect pearls, you want to make sure that you're closing it enough. You're going to go back counterclockwise and then close it up so that you get a perfect seal here because they seem like they're closed. They're not always closed. Okay. Now I'm going to add some water to this. Okay. And I'm going to take my fan brush. Okay? And because I have so many of these, I'm going to take... This is the one here, and I'm just going to star night sky like that. 
And I'm going to do this one because it's gorgeous, but I do want to cover up some of my trees. So kind of like that. And then I'm going to go. <laughs> this one just gives you slightly finer um, stars, starry night skies. Plus, it also adds that beautiful sheen because it is mica as well. So you get sheen on sheen on sheen. And then I'm going to do the same thing for, yeah, I like that way because the star is really nice. So I'm mixing up my micas, loading up my brush, and now I'm just going to go in. But again, this, these two things, if you have a splat box or something like a, a container, like a box with sides or something, this is something that you would want to do with that because I does spray like it's on my coffee mug here, which is even out of frame. So <laughs> it does make a bit of a mess this way, but that's fine because it's, you know, that's part of the fun of playing, isn't it? All right. So now I'm going to bring my baby wipe in and clean that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's clean this up. And clean my brush the lazy green way. This is not necessarily the way that I recommend for everybody, but it's what I'm going to be doing. So I like to I'll put some water on there and then and this one isn't so bad because it's just you know, but i do the same thing when i'm painting as well so I'm dry it off on this and then i'll do another paddle and now there doesn't appear to be much more sheen to that so i'm going to call that good enough on my brush and uh again don't don't necessarily do that you know have a little thing of water here or something that's what i would recommend <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's see if one of these is dry enough. I, wanna, I don't think this guy's, no, yeah, those paint ones are not going to dry super quick. So uh, let's take this panel because I know it's dry already. My final stage of what I like to do is, again, we want to focus in. So I trimmed all of these panels. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this. So this is four by five and a quarter. So it'll go on to a regular A2 size card, which is uh, four and a quarter by five and a half, and then have a white border around it. But I really wanna highlight the colors that are on here. Plus I have that lip where the water gathered there a little bit, right? So in order to um, camouflage that, but also to make it again, look more like the night sky, all I'm gonna do is bring in my black ink you can use dye based or pigment based, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to edge with a darker color. Now you can use this with a blending brush like this if you've got uh, the blending brushes like this, or if you have um, makeup sponges. Same, 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 same. No difference. Okay. And I like to make sure that I get the corners. I try to round the corners a little bit. So I kind of kiss the edges like this, but on the corners, I like to round them a little bit. Makes it look like I've got a narrower focus or make it look almost like oblong or ovalish kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so you can start to see if it's difference, right? And particularly down here where I even had some white space. I don't know how I managed to miss that, but that's okay. Because now I'm coming in, covering it up with a little bit of black. I'm going to leave some of this yellow down here. Just about done. Okay, so that to the side. There it is. And I'm using Versafine Claire um, Nocturne, so that's the black color. This is a pigment based ink. It is one of the best, uh, well, for me, it's the pigment ink that I like to use. It covers well, it has deep, rich 
intense colors. Um, yeah, it's the pigment ink that I go to. So I use it for uh, silhouettes. Um, when I'm doing Lavinia stamps, things like that, I use it for um, for most of my sentiments. And uh, yeah, you just get beautiful, beautiful coverage. Okay, so now I'm having a look at this and I can decide which way do I like up or down. So I kind of like this, like the way that it's kind of traveling downwards that way. So I think, yeah, I like that deep, intense color up there. So I'm going to do that. Okay, But I want to show you... <clears throat> how you can finish these. I'm not going to put them on a card, but I'm just going to show you how you can finish these. So I've got simple sentiment here. Look at that. So I could just pop that thank you onto there. Okay. I have a beautiful die cut that is just some trees that I can put this on. So I'd have to fit it on there because it's this die is very, like when I put it on the cardstock, I really have to fit it on there because I cut my um, background piece a little bit too much. But look at that's gorgeous. Like that's just beautiful. And then you could do um, just even in here. So this, I'm gonna pop this out here. And then simply happy birthday like that. All done. Right. Okay. So that's one there. The other thing that we could do is let's take this and that. It's a beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that is. Like that is just, that's, love that. I might have to do that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So those are the options with this background. Okay. Um, now with this background, oh, no, I'm still drying. Again, I'm going to smudge my snowflakes in this one. So, but what I could do on this one is I have much smaller uh, sentiments. Okay. So I don't need to um, add a lot onto them because um, they've already got the trees. They've already got the trees on them. I want to make sure that those are going to um, be still be the focal. So I could do very simply down here like this. Happy birthday. Okay. This is you make me smile. Something to that extent. That was really funny uh, or lovely. Hello, gorgeous. I can do that. Okay. I can even this is like nice enough that or, and thin enough. I could do it down here. So I did some Christmas cards like this with a simple Merry Christmas sentiment that I had. Those are options that work. Um, okay, so those could all work. Another thing that could work is I have these guys that I colored. These are from Lawn Pond, actually. Um, let me see if I can pull them out here. Okay, so these, probably not on this one, but let's say there's this guy here. So I liked, I'm gonna put them onto the side here. Nope, I liked it this way. Now look at these kind of really cute. Oh my goodness. I had so much fun coloring these. Okay, so we've got um I did sets like this. Okay, so we can do this. There's a couple of little little trees that go with them. So and this could be simple enough to do like you could do hello gorgeous. You could do you make me smile. Like that. That's really cute. Just them sitting there looking at it. Also, happy birthday. That works too. But what I have here, so this set also comes with um, comes with some little trees and a stack. Like, do a nice little tree here kind of thing. So I'll, obviously after I've edged it and whatever, right? And then, <laughs> example. Right. So because this isn't, this is going in this direction. So what I could do is trim off this last deer right here so that there's two deer. And there you go. I've got a great little Christmas card. So fun. And so uh, like, this is adorable. Adorable. So anyway, um, that's going to be the technique today. I'm going to clean up my mess because I've made quite a mess here. But uh, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I'd be happy to answer what I can. Um, please keep them kind. Anything that's not kind will be deleted. Um, but uh, yeah, that's going to be the class today. Um, I really appreciate everybody who shows up for liking, um, subscribing, watching my videos, passing them along. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys all in a couple of weeks. Um, thanks so much. Take care, everybody. And uh, Love y'all. Bye-bye.